The Ryan Reese Show from Southern California. This is The Ryan Reese Show. Post your questions using at Ryan Reese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Are you ready? Wow, this is some good bubble water. I'm plugging it. I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm sponsored. Did you know that? Are you really? No. Hey, oh, dude, fun. just Instagram. <laughs> no. You never know. Can I get sponsored? Can we please get some bubblies over here to the Ryan Reese show? It's not Death Wish, but what's like the other sparkling water that's like the Death something? Liquid Death? That's liquid that's death. good. I don't like Liquid Death. Anyway, dude, listen. Just get a scent. <laughs> I got full body blankets sent, like little sleeping bags, but they're like, they yeah. hug you. And I was like, hey. And they sent me some. Dude, I love it. I love this stuff. Chrysalises. All right, well, check this out. Oh, you going. recognize these voices that are uh, in the studio tonight. Tonight's going to be amazing. I got Austin Carl- Carlisle in studio and Christina. Christina is one of the ambassadors of the Whosoevers, and uh, you guys know her from the films, and she's been on the radio several times, as well as uh, Austin, which is an ambassador of the Whosoevers, and these guys are full sending on tour. So anyway, guys, I wanted to bring you in studio because the word on the street is you've been traveling, and you guys have been connecting with different Calvaries um, across the states and um, doing uh, some, some youth events, some Sunday morning church events, uh, speaking at some rehab facilities, just pretty much kind of what we do. We go where there's need, and our hearts are always to, to minister to the broken and even not even uh, people that are dealing, struggling with a lot of things, just inspiring youth to, to be musicians, to be artists, to be pastors, teachers, evangelists, um, president of the United States, whatever they want to do, but we want to encourage people and we want to do prevention and we want to get them before they make all the bad decisions uh, that we all have. And if they've made the bad decisions like us, we want to let them know that their life can be transformed. And that's pretty much the simplicity of, of the whosoever's movement and doing what we do. But I did get a call saying that you guys went out to uh, Divine, Te- was it Divine Texas? Yeah, divine, text? Like divine, sin- divine, and then like outskirts. Oh, scoot up a little bit more because I need you up on the mic so we could hear you guys a little bit better. Yeah. Our vocal okay, so wait, because you guys are out there with um, with Matt and Mike, right? Mm-hmm. Matt, Pastor Mike, and yep. Pastor Joe at Grace Calvary Chapel. So what was the event out there? We, oh, we're going to start with there you, was a, there was a <laughs> There was a few. We had, there was a youth retreat, which was two or three Calvaries oh, cool. combined. Um, it was like junior high and high school. Yeah. And they were out at this place called Leakey, Texas. Mm-hmm. And it was like desert. And then you drive and there's like a valley of like crystal clear green blue water. Really? And so it was like a, like a youth camp, youth camp. Mm-hmm. And Christine and I got invited to go spend the two days there with them. And then Sunday morning, because the lead, the senior pastor wanted to be with the youth and the event was still going, they asked me to preach for at the, you know, 8.30 and 11.30. At the church services. At Sunday, yeah. So What, what church was that? Uh, Grace Calvary Chapel. Grace. Oh, yeah, I've been there mm-hmm. a couple times. Those guys are awesome. The senior pastor, I can't think of his pastor name. Pastor Joe. Joe. Pastor Joe. Yeah. Joe is awesome. Those guys are those guys are really cool, man. We, we've worked with them a lot. Yeah. So you got to hang out with them and their church. Um, so, well, let's start. What was first? The youth camp was first? Yeah, youth camp. It was Friday night, Saturday, and then... So who all went out there? It was just you two, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah. what happened? You guys got there? What was that? What was the vibe when you guys got there? It was, it was junior high and high school? Yeah, so one thing that's just like a funny side story. So um, I was in Mexico three times over the last couple months, and when I go there, I have like full bars, right? I'm talking like five... 5G, like all yeah. the things. In Mexico? I, in Mexico. I get to Leaky, Texas, zero service. I was like, come on, dude. <laughs> but anyway, so it was really cool because uh, the first night we were out there, you know, they had us go to, um, we, they had, you know, they had like probably three or four youth groups, right? Austin, mm-hmm. they had like a three or four youth groups at this camp. And well, what churches? It was, it was, uh, it was, it was like, Grace, Divine, and what else? Um, there was a couple others I don't remember the okay. names of. But uh, when we were there the first night, they had, you know, just a combined session and they had us share their testimonies and and do kind of like it, you know, an altar call and going into an afterglow. And so Austin looks at me and it's like, what's an afterglow? I was like, well, my friend. So I was like, you know, something we wait on the Lord, you move in the gifts. And so, you know, so he goes up and I go up and then he goes up, does the altar call. And then he's like, got what, like three things. Yeah. Well, really? Sir. Yeah. What, what was the response? What was the response like with when you guys were like sharing with the kids 
Yeah. Were they, were they, were they, um, they were atten- attentive? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, and it's, it's like, like, uh, like this past weekend, you know, we wanted to be there for the full, you know, retreat cause we did one here. Yeah. And so they could spend experience. time with us and see us and see where we weren't just like mm-hmm. some guy that comes and speaks and dips. Yeah. But, so we had like just got there and we ate, we literally ate with everybody. Hanging out with everyone. And then started giving our testimonies. And the afterglow wasn't supposed to be till the next night, remember? Mm-hmm. But I was like, well, if we'll just see where God leads it and yeah. where the Spirit leads it. And like Christina said, I gave my testimony, and then her, and then I did an altar call, and then that led her. And then we went like back, back and forth. Yeah. And yeah. then we spent like till probably 11 30. Yeah. It was past like lights out. Yeah. The kids even had free time and they stayed. And they stayed. See, that's when you know God's moving. Yeah. yeah. And they stayed. What were the three things? I remember that God showed you the three things during the afterglow to like pray for. Do you remember those three things? Uh, one was legs and hips and healing. Mm-hmm. Another was identity. Mm-hmm like uh, sexual identity right. and then another was either oppression or possession just feeling that heaviness of hurt and then we know that heaviness of hurt leads to a deeper issue which mm-hmm. is the heart which is well what's been embedded in the heart mm-hmm. and those are three things that because you guys have been around me enough I'm mm-hmm. you know I'm 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 not go- I, I don't I take steps of faith but mm-hmm. I'm 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 gonna take it if I if I and I'm sure, you know, yeah. I'm not going to, which, which I guess maybe not that, you know, faith is taking that it step is. out if you're it's not baby, sure. Baby steps. But yeah. it's, it's, uh, it was just something that God was like, I clearly saw. Yeah. And, um, you know, those were things that I was praying for and, and I, and I saw, and then after, you know, we did an altar call and there was a, tons of kids gave their life to the Lord. And it was so awesome to see, cause then we're like, you know, we were, we wanted to see who wanted to be baptized in the spirit and needed the healing and hurt and to go deeper into that. And that's when God revealed those things to me. Mm -hmm. And for the next, like, like I said, two, three hours, Christina had like a line of girls girls, and I had a line of like 20, 30 kids like waiting and coming. And every single one of those issues was addressed to touch on one, the healing one, Mm -hmm. uh, was this girl with eczema mm. and it, and it, uh, it was crazy cause she had eczema and asthma and my daughter has that. Oh, got it. And then, um, they, the like hips and legs, I was, I clearly saw it, but no one came to me with any mm. hip and leg pain. That's not true. Chris, his knees and his knees led to anger issues. Oh, and mm. also there was a the lady cookie, that came that. up to me. Yeah. And she was like, when you were praying for healing, like when you were praying, when Austin was praying, like he's, she's like, I couldn't walk and my hip pop back into place and it was mm-hmm. healed because mm-hmm. she was cooking in the kitchen. Yeah. And I didn't even know about that till yeah. the next day. Yeah. She wasn't there. Right. She was like in the chill, you know, mm-hmm. time. Well, as we, as we always say on this show is because we're, we're great commissionists and what you're reading the Bible, you're, you actually see it when you step out in those baby steps and, and great faith steps, whatever it is, God's faithful and it's his grace. And you see it in the Bible and God says, preach the gospel and the signs and wonders will follow. And that's basically what happens uh, when you go out and people move and people get excited and they know God's real. And he's the same yesterday, today and forever. Yep. What was what was the response when they came up for the altar call? Like, was there a lot of kids responding, um, coming up, like trying to like, go all in? Because this is the first day. Normally the conferences, it takes, you know, like a, a good like... Good twenty four hours to yeah. kind of crack crack the place, but it sounds like the yeah. egg was cracked uh, the first night. We're right away, man. <laughs> oh and yeah, Christina and I's testimonies, t- testimonies are so different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I mean the root of it, you know, hurt and pain and yeah. all these things, and it. I felt like there were so many kids that could relate to it, and with my line of guys. Every single guy, half of them was what God had revealed to me that week or two weeks before which i was supposed to speak on ephesians 4 Mm -hmm. and they changed it 24 hours uh beforehand to ephesians 5 Mm -hmm. and then the for the sunday morning it was supposed to be ephesians 6 and i thought it was ephesians 4 so but but oh shoot god you know i i saw that i needed to read all of ephesians yeah to uh, truly understand what paul was getting at you know he cut it in half and half of those guys it was what god revealed to me and the other half was they were going through the exact same things 
that I've either been through mm -hmm. or go through, mm -hmm. you know, since I started my walk with God. Mm -hmm. And that was really powerful to me um, to be able to just give them an answer that God, God's clearly shown me and he's also I've experienced because he's walked me through it. That's amazing. You know, I saw yeah. from from a, uh, a like, young well, man. Well, let's talk about some of the things. Like what were the, you should and then tell I'm going to have the you... story with the with the medallion oh, thing. Yeah. yeah, you should tell that one. That that's one was a, cool. That's and, a, a, and the image God showed you. Let's yeah. talk about a couple stories. And I'll have her talk about a couple of the girl stories. Yeah, um well I mean two of them before that one there was one boy he he was struggling with coming to Christ because mm. he it was on his heart it had been on his heart but he didn't think he could because he identified as homosexual God. and I could see it was like crushing him and and he he said he you know he he knew he couldn't be a Christian to be a homosexual yeah. and I said it doesn't matter what you look like what you are mm. you know here's this line mm. it doesn't matter once you step into Jesus that's your identity you find your identity yep. in him mm -hmm. And then you go from there, and God's going to do his work in you from there. Yeah. But before that line, anything goes. Yeah. And, you know, we were able to, I was able to, to, to lead him to the Lord and just reveal that to him, which is something that I went through. I tried to get my life all cleaned up before I could come back to God, like how foolish. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. there's no way I could yeah, do that. exactly. And that, that was awesome to me. And then, uh, did, he, did he smile? Yeah. <laughs> I bet. Dude, was... well, the, 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 uh, Another one that was because they were church kids. So it's wait, crazy. Hey, hold that. on, really quick. So this kid, this gay kid, so he ended up giving his life to Christ. Yeah, and he's just like, God, forgive me my sins. I, yeah. I want well, you. Well, there's and, no repentance apart. Yeah, yeah. There's no yeah. salvation. But no, that's awesome. Repentance. No, this is great for the listeners to hear that. Yeah. Church God kids. Is, yeah, church, church kids too. And that's what's so yeah. awesome to me yeah. is, you know, kids that don't go to church slash do it's the same thing. The same Without thing. Christ, you you know, it's it doesn't same. work by it's osmosis. And so it, there was him and then a, a light one before we, my, my dad's story. He, uh, this young man came up to me and he was just sobbing and he was like a bigger guy, athlete. Mm -hmm. And he simply asked like how to deal with his struggle with porn mm -hmm. because he loves Jesus, and he's 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 a Christian, and he said like, "How do I overcome this?" Yeah, and it was so sweet to me because that's something that I struggled with. Yep. and it was also I could see the genuineness of the love of Jesus in him, and he wasn't crying because he was guilty or it was bad or this. He was crying because he knew he was hurting Christ. Mm -hmm. He knew he was grieving the Spirit, mm -hmm. and it was like it broke his heart. So to be able to walk him through that, you know, was was really special for me because they don't op the people don't open up about that type of thing to yeah. everyone. Yeah, it's a very that's a very uh, uh, taboo subject to yeah. talk about. Yeah. But it's so, you know the porn thing is such a reality. I mean, you, me, her. I mean, I think everyone that I know in my circle uh, struggled with pornography, and it's a huge thing. And as you talk about it, it sets them it sets people free. Mm -hmm. You know, the thing is, people want to hide it. And that's where the enemy gets a hold of them. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. So you got you got this gay kid that gives his life to Christ. You got this guy that just wants to be transformed because of the porn. He's he's all in. He's praying. And then healing. The, you got another one. That healing was really cool to me because mm -hmm. she it reminded me hip. of all the stories I hear of you know the Who, Jesus who's healing? movement. What, what's healing? Uh, she was one of the volunteers, a, a older lady, and she was she did she was in the kitchen. And so, so the, those ladies, like, had their break, you know, yeah. and they were, like, in bed or, you know, on a whole other side of the camp. Mm. And I didn't know about it mm. till the next day. Mm. And it was just awesome for me to know that, you know, obviously you can't put the spirit in a box, can't put God in a box. Yep. But to know that, that that word that God gave me, that that seeing hips and legs yep. and, it, and it happening was just really special to me. Um, to get to see the book of Acts come to life and mm -hmm. get to see all that Paul came to life. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the, the last gnarly story, it, it was it, it, this, the past two, the past, that weekend was so radical to me because, you know, I'm new to this, you know, I've, I've only been walking with God for four and a half, five years, mm -hmm. you know? So like, uh, I even talked about you in my testimony, how you came along and discipled me and like, and, and, uh, 
So seeing this stuff is like just, it, that's why when I give my testimony, it's hard sometimes because I'm, it's like when I first met Maddie, like I was so in love with her. I just yeah. wanted to shut up about her, you know? <laughs> and with this. Uh, and the testimony is constantly changing because the more that God does. Yeah, because the more he's revealing and uh -huh. the more he's shaping yep. and the more he's yep. building through that, which is also something we found out Sunday morning that he put on my heart. But this, uh, the last the last time I encountered like demonic possession or something like of that sort mm -hmm. was with you. And hey. so it was with you. We were in Jersey and we were at a youth camp and <clears throat> I was downstairs after I gave my testimony and this young man asked if I, if I'll pray with him. And as soon as I put my hand on his shoulder, he puts his hand on mine and like grasp it. And he goes, as soon as I say this, you'll remember. He goes, this is where the darkness meets the light. Oh. And I didn't know, like, I knew what to do, but I didn't know. It just, like, shocked mm -hmm. me. There's people all around us. So I just start, like, saying every name of Jesus that I know, and, like, shouting it. And, like, he's, like, shaking, and I'm shaking. And, it, and it, like, it stunned me, you know? Like, mm -hmm. it tripped me out because yeah. it was like, whoa. Like, yeah. I'm in this now. Yeah. And the security guards ended up pulling him off. Turns out he got kicked out of that church a bunch. He, he had, like, ammunition in his trunk before. But they let him into the, the, the youth thing because we were there, mm -hmm. you know. And I ran upstairs to the green room, and I go, Ryan, dude, there's this guy that's possessed by a demon down there. And I just, you know, he just grabbed me, whatever. And Ryan, you stripped, stood up. Where's he at? <laughs> Where's he at? Like, let me at him. <laughs> and I always remember that because it was just like you're, you were like a general – of battle and I was, you know, uh, you know, new, new to the battle. New. Yeah. yeah. And, and I always remember that, like, like, uh, Paul says that we're, you know, to not envy is not the word, but the spiritual gifts, like we're to desire those gifts that, you know, and, 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 you know, the, the, to know what the greatest gift is, that's, that's, you can't say that because the greatest gift is what is needed right then and there. Mm -hmm. And that's what, you know, God provides and the person he provides. Mm -hmm. But I remember well, seeing that in you and, and desiring that, you know, desiring that, you know, where's he at? Let's go get him. Mm -hmm. Cause I, I was fear is not the word, right word, but it stunned me. You um, know? Well, when you come across a demon, I think it's fair to say, you know, you can be scared, you know, fear can, cause you know, that when the demonic realm manifests and you see the darkness in your face, instantaneously most, most every time we come across a demon or whatever it's like it's kind of like a you know or it's overseen over and over and you see god's glory where you see the power then you're like let's go yeah but I'll, the first times i think every the first five times was probably very for me like oh shoot oh my like we're in it like this is like happening right now and then you gotta like get your game on like game face that's what happened in but Texas. now yeah so you that prepared you you know woke you up to the to the reality of the supernatural. Yeah, and it's it's different. The, the you know, darkness. I always think of be be doers of the word, not hearers. So it's different reading about it, hearing about it, experiencing it in the same room, mm -hmm. but to be in it. The front and, line of it. And yeah. it's it's that's what happened at this youth retreat, and you know that like just like you said, it's okay, and I, you know, but here we go, and I realized there was only me and Matt. So okay, if, so wait, you're praying for a kid and he manifested. Yes. Just to be clear. So 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 he Matt Matt, who is the youth pastor there, young kid, like yeah. 20 years old, mm -hmm. super dope dude, man. Mm -hmm. He came with you guys to Texas when you guys did the Texas tour and was like just taking he's it all. He's a good in. Bible teacher too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a dope kid. And uh he brought him up to me, this guy, and this guy, stone face, you know, total just not sad, not whatever, and his thing was anger, and anger because of family things, you know, not to give details, but family stuff, yeah. true hurt mm -hmm. that was deep, you know, rooted deep, mm -hmm. and no emotions, and we began, you know, he, we, I began to pray with him after learning some of his story. Mm -hmm. um, and God gave you a vision? Yeah, dude, and so as I'm praying with him, he was just nothing, you know, he, I know, uh, nothing yeah and as i was praying with him god gave me this vision and i told him i see you half of your body is trapped in like a barbed wire fence yeah. and it's all ripped to shreds and your arm is caught in it and you're you're bleeding and it's like ripped up and you're caught 
And the other half of your body is like reaching out for help with your hand open. Mm -hmm. And I was praying and I didn't realize, but he had his hand clutched in real life. And I looked down as I saw that and I said, what's in what's in your hand? Um, And he wouldn't open his hand. And then that's when I was like, what is your name? Like, what is your real name? Uh And like calling calling that that spirit out. Because I knew at that point, like, God gave you discernment. He had his, you know, he was clutched and he mm-hmm. couldn't let go on his own. So, so I asked for him to reveal his name, told him to reveal his name, and he opened his hand. And he said, This is my name. And it was a medallion, a demonic medallion. And it said some crazy stuff on it. It had so, this, like, uh, so whatever that, that he had, like, some, some kind of witchcraft. Yeah, medallion. it was a medallion on it. Uh, or a medallion what? with like n- n- his name on it. Whoa, that's and nuts. so as soon as he did that, I I took it, you know, and I just <laughs> threw it on the ground. He yes. was like, "All I hear is Christina," and I was like, and I picked it up, and I was like, "Okay, we're gonna keep it here." Because I didn't know? want anybody to have it. Right, or, right. You know? Just grabbed it out, and yeah. so kicked it away, and just went in, man, and getting to be used by God mm-hmm. and seeing God. Do what God's been doing was so awesome, mm-hmm. and it's it was so awesome because this boy started to break and he started to open and then crying and then releasing and then uh, Christina came over and you know he accepted salvation mm-hmm. and then he accepted the spirit and we said you were designated a demonic spirit now you're designated the spirit you got the Holy Spirit the baptism yeah. of the Holy Spirit yeah. and he just. His whole countenance changed. Yes, I his love whole, it. It's like he, the weight was lifted off of him. And like an hour later, I was playing basketball with the guys. And he was playing basketball. And I went up to him and I was like, what's up, man? What's your name? And I, and I was like. That was him. It was him. He dude. looked different. He looks completely different. Dude, that's like the demoniac. Or like when you see these people because they're possessed and they have the darkness. And then they just become new instantaneously. Yeah. A new, they look like a new person. Is yeah, that a, yeah. was he tripping out on that? Yeah. And and we were talking about <laughs> Ephesians four that day, which uh-huh. is the new life, the the the, mm-hmm. the old man and the new man. Yeah. And before that, the pastor was an axe. So it was so radical. These kids got to see well, the Ephesians book of, all about spiritual mm-hmm. warfare. So yeah. And they got to see it come to life, dude. Yeah. And that's amazing. Pastor Mike texted me just the other night. Like, there's still root coming from yeah mm-hmm. from that. And and uh, I had COVID up until two days before we left. That's right. And I was wrecked, like physically. I, I was COVID negative, but my body was just wrecked. But God was saying, "Go, go. you have to yeah. go." And yeah. my body was a week, you know, with their tumor flare up and COVID. So I'm like leaving the girls, and I was like, "I have to go." Yeah. And it's like even if just just for him, it was like that's why. And that, then you got to. Hold on. Um, oh yeah, and then oh, the next oh, day got... they were doing baptisms, okay. and I wasn't supposed to get in the water. Yeah, so I didn't, except for I was like, I asked him if I could baptism, but baptize him. Yeah. So I, that was the first time I've ever baptized someone. And Dude, I, that's amazing. And I got to do it, and uh, it was so special to me, man. Just, just letting being a tool for God, mm-hmm. and that's my prayer when I came to Christ was use use me. Mm-hmm. However you need, mm-hmm. and it's like that's what that looks like. We you said before, like you just show up, yeah, where God calls, and I just showed up, and it was just powerful, man, getting to see God just be God. I want to jump in here really quick because we're gonna get to Christina after this. Um, you know, as you're telling these stories for the listeners, it's the simplicity of of the gospel when you read it. When you're reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you're seeing Jesus has given us the instructions how to live and be a disciple. The number one, he says, you got to turn from your selfish ways, pick up your cross, and follow me. Daily, it says. So as you're following him through the refining process of the Holy Spirit, he will cleanse you. He will wash you white as snow with the blood that was shed on the cross. He will implant the power of the Holy Spirit in you. But then as you're reading and praying and, and just waiting on God for God to open the doors... Then you go, just like the disciples, when you see them, they went from town to town, village to village. That's all you're doing. You got invited to go to Texas. So you went to a town, and then you went to maybe a, pretty much a village because you went to some, like, camp or something. Yeah, there is right? cabins, yeah. Yeah, so a village, if you will. <laughs> Small little thing. And then you show up, you tell your story, you give the gospel, and then you open it up. The afterglow is basically an opening up for the Holy Spirit 
to for time for him to move. And as you do that, God starts revealing things to to you and Christina, and then you start praying for people. Things are said. The atmosphere changes. People start getting delivered, start getting saved. People start repenting, and there's a little mini revival happening. And when you experience that, it's addicting. Why? Because you're like, everything I've studied in the Bible, what I'm reading, I'm actually doing it. And that's what Jesus says. He says, you'll be doing greater things than I have done. Yeah. You know, you have not because you ask not. You have the, the, the dad, father, even, that you, even you earthly fathers wouldn't give your son a stone or a scorpion right. if they asked for bread or fish. So when you ask for the spirit, your heavenly father will give you more. He'll give it to you. And he's not going to. He's also, he's going to prepare you for where he's going to put you. Exactly. And he's not, it's like, I would never put my daughter in basketball because she's terrible at it. I've never practiced with her. Mm -hmm. You know, I would put her somewhere where I've been preparing her for. You know, that's, that's good too, the preparation, because what God was doing even prior to, he was already getting you, you were in Ephesians and you were popping from like chapter four to five to six, but everything in those chapters was everything, the, the tools of the scriptures that you're yeah. going to use. And he was already preparing your heart for everyone that you were going to encounter and the things that would need to be said, what you learned that week. Exactly. Sometimes, you know, randomly you'll run into like, you know, a situation where you'll, you'll, God will just pop you in and then his grace will get you through that moment. But that's because you spent time reading and praying and the word of God is already in you. But what I've seen on the great commission with all of us is he prepares your heart pre pre event to where you're going. And then you show up and you're just, you're just ready to full send, and that's exactly um, what happened on this trip. We have three minutes left. Um, oh, for the I'm, whole show? We have no, no, no. We oh, still, we still oh, have we got two halves. We, we still got two half times. Like, we, we still got another half. So um, we have uh, Austin Carlisle in studio and Christine. And I'm not gonna say her last name because I always mess it up. But they're both ambassadors, and you know Austin. He was the lead singer of the band of Mice and Men. Um, he has an I am second out as well. But I do want to use this time right now to let people know that you guys are available to come out and speak. And what I've noticed, I was just talking to our tour manager, Lucas, that you guys have been getting booked more often, more and more. I mean, you guys are still sending it, but um, more doors keep opening and opening. People have been emailing us and contacting you guys, and you guys are available to go out and do conferences, um, youth retreats. Um, uh, we do movie premieres. You, do, uh, you, you pretty much speak anywhere. Anywhere the door will open, and you can book one, you can book two. We got other ambassadors, but please contact the whosoever's. Uh, invite us out. We, uh, we, oh, we do schools. We do public schools, and public schools are opening right now globally for us. So get ready to full send this, this winter. But you can contact us at the whosoever's.com. If you want to find out more about uh, Christina and Austin, go to the whosoever's, go to the YouTube, type in their names. You will find. Plenty of shows. They've been on this show plenty of times, and you can see their heart. And you're already hearing what's going on in their heart. These guys, I've known them for a long time. I've been with them. I walked along with them. They're legit. They're amazing. They're 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 rooted and grounded in the Word. They're Holy Spirit led and filled. And when they show up to do the outreach, you're gonna see God do awesome things. So I highly encourage you guys to to book them to come out. Who knows? Maybe I could come out too on a tour. But yes. We want to do it. Please contact us. Go to thewhosoever's.com and check out um, our website. We have a bunch of different products that fund our mission to continue to go to the schools. We have uh, products you could donate. Um, however, but more importantly, I would say is that pray that God will open more doors because right now what we're seeing in culture with, with what's going on in the news and everything, I mean, there's all kinds of weird stuff happening, but people are nervous and scared but this is the most important time for us to go and reach people yeah. and bring the gospel, which is the good news. Let yeah. them know that God loves them. He wants to forgive them. They're never too far gone. No. They could come. They could be filled. They could be healed and renewed and have the Holy Spirit implanted in their life, which they'll, will, they'll be turned on as in like turned on to like a Wi-Fi connection to the God in heaven. He will show them what plans he has for them, what path to take. And he will transform all that stuff in their life that is destroying them. And he will make them new and put that call on their life. So pray that God will open more doors and raise up more ambassadors. You know, right now we have like nine evangelists on the trip. But we need like 30, you know what I mean? Just to just take the world by storm. We'll talk to you guys in two minutes right after the break. Peace. More 
of The Ryan Reese Show. Coming up, post your questions at Ryan Reese on his Instagram, Twitter, and or Facebook. Over the past four years, an astounding 51,000 students from seven states, five countries, and 183 schools have responded to the gospel message because of the Whosoever's Kill the Noise Tour. A 15-year-old living in today's world gathers as much information in one day as a 15-year-old 80 years ago would have gathered in one full year. Do you realize the youth suicide rate is at an all-time high? Listen, in the next 24 hours in the USA alone, 1,439 teens will attempt suicide. Every 100 minutes, a teen takes their own life. 2,795 teenage girls will become pregnant and 15,006 teens will use drugs for the first time. The increasing amount of noise bombarding our students daily is destroying their minds and souls at an alarming rate. For this reason, the Whosoever's Kill the Noise Tour is a necessity. All right, dude, we are at the Kill the Noise Tour. We're in California right now and it's about to pop off. We're getting everyone ready. We're gonna pray. And then uh, basically the event's gonna start and we're gonna see all kinds of kids come to the Lord. It's gonna be sick. is to reach as many students as we possibly can with the message of the gospel. This is no easy task. We need kingdom builders like you to join us in this battle against the ever-increasing noise that surrounds the lives of these students. Please consider helping us expand this mission by partnering with the Whosoever's Kill the Noise Tour. Thank you for empowering future generations with us. The Ryan Reese Show. All right, we are back in studio with uh, Christina and Austin. Um, man, that first half was legit. Just talking about you guys out in Texas, Calvary Chapel Divine and uh, Calvary Grace. In um, they're in uh, Divine, and what's the other one? They're in Texas. In um, it's, it's the greater it, like San Antonio area. Yeah, San Antonio area. That's right, San Antonio area. And you guys went out to that conference, and it was this youth conference. And instead of doing the altar call at the end, you guys proceeded to do the altar call on the first night. And it went <laughs> down, and then you proceeded to go do an afterglow where the Holy Spirit started showing up. Some people got healed, and uh, you guys casted a demon out of a guy, and that was also amazing. But, you know, we should be surprised that, like, you know, we shouldn't be surprised with this stuff. This is what Jesus does when you're living the Great Commission and you step out by faith and you put yourself into that situation and allowing the Holy Spirit to do what he wants to do. And that's basically the fruit that you see. But, Christina, you have another side because there's two lines from what I hear. There was the guy line and the girl line. And that's what I love about traveling with, a, with having a, a girl and a guy on tour yeah. because it's such a need. To, you know, because yeah. it's a whole different game with the, with the, the, the girl stuff. And they could speak, like Christina could speak into them. So what happened with your line? 
Tell me a couple of the yeah, cool stories. Yeah, you know, so even uh, that f- uh, Friday night going into Saturday, you know, even like I'll touch on like, you know, a lot of the girl stuff because basically that first night kind of just broke the hard ground with all the kids and going into the next day, like Austin did a split session for the guys. I did a split session for the girls. At the conference, got it. Yeah, at this retreat and we got to go in even deeper and what was so interesting is that oftentimes when I walk into church settings, I always have to, the enemy will always try to keep me from talking about the things that I know God wants me to talk about because Mm -hmm. sometimes there's just a fear of like, oh, well, they think I'm too radical. Well, they think I'm too whatever. But the Lord's like, because, you know, sometimes people in church are like, well, don't talk about that because that's too whatever. And I'm like, but there's so many people that are cutting. So like, why wouldn't I talk about that, you know? And so that night too, like seriously, like everything that Austin talked about too, like I had a line, you know, we were going two, two and a half hours, three hours deep in with these kids, just like person after person. These were all church kids. Mm. 95% of the girls that came up to me, every single one of them had a story of cutting, had a story of depression, had a story of a broken home, had a story of suicidal thoughts. Like every single one of them, these are church kids. So even to encourage all my friends out there who are youth ministry people or pastors or leaders of churches, the kids that are struggling outside of the church and the issues inside the church are exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Except the kids in church, the biggest thing that I saw was that a lot of them struggle with the shame of feeling like they have to put up a mask that they're okay to show people that they're good in church because that's what Satan will try to attack them with. Well, if you're a Christian, you shouldn't be struggling. You shouldn't have this problem. Yeah, Mm -hmm. so the fact that me and Austin just came in and we just talked about it gave them a freedom to be like, oh, I could take off that mask and talk about what I'm going going through and so even going into the next day with the girl sessions too like there's one specific story that I talked about purity with the girls but there's this one girl that I saw even as we were eating lunch who she was off by herself and the Lord just showed me you know that this girl's just dealing with just you know a lot of loneliness outcasted whatever and she actually came up to me after and I you know I shared with the girls and she said can we talk and I said yeah she said, you know, she started crying and she said she was struggling with loneliness and just all these things in her life and, you know, just with cutting. And I just got a chance to pray with her. And afterwards, uh, one of the pastors confirmed, he's like, that's the one girl I've been praying for. And the fact that when we, because we had the openness and the boldness to talk about what they're going through, that is why for them, they felt comfortable coming up to us. But most people in church will never feel comfortable coming up to you and talking to you about issues in your life if you're not talking about it from the pulpit. And if you're not addressing these issues that they go through, you know what I'm saying? And so that was cool. And so even to like from there, you know, going into the the Sunday morning, you know, with Austin, like the first service on Sunday morning, all the colorful people came. So go into that because that was crazy. Yeah. So this is that. Oh, this is that Grace Church. Yeah. Yeah. At Grace, Pastor Joe asked me to to speak. And I thought I was going to be speaking to like the parents of the youth Mm -hmm. that were all at the youth camp because it wasn't over till nighttime. So I I had... Something all prepared and notes. I even borrowed the whosoever Mac uh, no, you know, iPad. I was I'm pumped. Gonna ha- I'm going to have you scoot up a little bit more on yeah. the mic. Sorry, because your voice. Oh, we broke it. Just joking. <laughs> um, so I was all pumped. I was like ready. Yeah. You know, half of me, you know, I, I've i never done that. Right. I've always just, just give your testimony. Yeah. So I was really excited to go verse by verse. And I went out and it was like. 20, 30 of like are my kids, like fans. Yeah, there's, <laughs> yeah, there's like these two girls like sitting in the back because I went to the bathroom no at way. one. No Yeah. At 8.30 in the morning. Oh, because you posted the flyer. Yeah. So you had, the, you had your, your, from the band mm-hmm. you were in, they showed up. And it wasn't, it was like a, there wasn't a lot of like, you know, normal members there. So I'm up there like in Ephesians and verse by verse. No and like way. And there's How'd a girl with go? her. I, so I go to the bathroom and come back and I'm sitting in the back and there's this girl, two girls that come in. One of them had bright orange hair and bright purple hair. And I was like, yeah, they're not from church, you know? Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. that's the kind of crowd that was yeah, there. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And and that like, I was like, oh, Wait, shoot. Wait, first service. First service. 830, dude. So we had a guy that drove four hours. Somebody bought him new tires just so he could make it. Oh my gosh! But, uh, okay, I can't wait to hear this story. So, so the you know I was you know me like I get super like you yeah. know I'm still struggle with that just seeing that I am good enough in Christ and I'm not. It's all Him. Yeah. You know, and it's not performance based, but I was 
it's a responsibility, you know. If you're up there, you're you're held more responsible, mm-hmm. and you're you're. It's a privilege, and so I felt unprepared with with that. You know, know your crowd. I was you know seeing my kids there, but God ended up obviously moving in it. And for the second service in the break, I Christine Christina saw me. My blood oxygen was like eighty eight. I was like freaking out because God said no Ephesians. So I was like, okay. For the second one? For the second one. So I was like, okay. So then what, what do I do? Nothing. He, he, I, I got nothing. And right as the last song's going, right before I, I, Isaac was like about to bring me up, I, and I was in the youth room like by myself, like, ah, oh, like yeah. praying, yeah. like, you know, I have no Ephesians, then what? And I hear a little kid outside the door ask, Is pros- does prosecute mean murder? And I knew he meant, you know, persecute. Persecu- Even if he meant prosecute. Yeah. Does prosecute mean murder? And my head instantly clicked with the spirit showing me, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Mm-hmm. And I went in about Saul to Paul, that encounter and how the persecution of God's children, he takes it personal Mm -hmm. and that that can mean anything. And I talked about, uh, you know, Ananias and Paul and doing, you know, he was blinded, but his eyes were opened Mm -hmm. and this, this spiritual meaning of that. And I talked about, uh, Stephen, the first martyr said, evangelist Stephen, Jesus was, that was the first time in scripture, Besides when he, the rapture of the church, when he, the second coming, that Jesus stands up. Mm-hmm. So Jesus stood up, welcomed him. And the last thing that Stephen said, one of the last things he said was asking for God to forgive them. Mm-hmm. And same with Jesus. He asked God to forgive them. Mm-hmm. And then through the Spirit, Peter got to minister to the, the people that were, responsible, that were responsible for the crucifixion of Christ. And they were forgiven. Jesus' prayer was answered. And then down the line, Stephen, his prayer was answered through Paul. But the, the thing I touched, I stuck on with Paul was he told Ananias to go lay hands on him. And then he said, for he, he has to see what he must suffer in my name. Mm. Mm. And that brings, that brought up the whole of my, you know, we go through these pains, the things we struggle with, the things we experience, the trials, the tribulations, and James counted joy, Mm -hmm. and Romans, great, you know, character, perseverance, and the hope in the Holy Spirit that does not put us to shame. And it all just clicked. And for me, that's something that's, that God just speaks so radically through, for me, Mm -hmm. because I experience it. Mm -hmm. And I never knew I never knew until like up there that day that that Paul, the the analogy of 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 the spiritual the spiritual what it means spiritually of he, he was blinded but his eyes were open right and then he blind but now he could see yeah he received the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. and went on to do that but I never realized I, I will show him what he must suffer for my mm-hmm. name and what came to me was that Saul Paul was trying to put out. This, this, the fire, you know, this whole, this Holy Spirit fire that was Christianity that just set ablaze. He was trying to put it out and made him mad. He went to go follow the fire to Damascus on the way to Damascus. And then there through a night, he caught the fire. He caught the Holy Spirit Mm -hmm. and then he spread it. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was just to have that that revelation up there for myself yeah. and then being God, able to share it. I downloaded it. And then you having, there. you know, grown men. I had a 52, 53-year-old guy come up to me, been going to the church for six years. Yeah. And I mentioned something when you said, I, I came to you and I was like, dude, I want to come to Christ, but I don't want to be a poser because mm-hmm. I, I couldn't, when I wasn't with, walking with God, I hated Christian posers. Like, yeah. I'm a Christian, but they look like the rest of the world. Yeah. And he said that that spoke to him. He said, I've been coming to this church. I know the truth, but I'm a hypocrite. Mm. 
And he gave his life to God right then and there because he didn't want to be a hypocrite anymore. For six years, this guy was there. And then, boom, the Holy Spirit gets him. I started, I was like, let's Isn't pray together. Amazing? I said, God, he said, God. I said, and I started to go. And then he just took the prayer. He, he already knew. He it. repented. And he was like crying, good looking, sharp dressed dude. His wife and kids were in the back. And it like just made me so pumped that going verse by verse uh -huh. through his word. Yep. And then putting drops of my testimony in there because yeah. they're real. Yeah, yeah. For, yeah. They, they will know by the Spirit and, and yeah. your testimony. Yeah, exactly. And it, like, got me so excited. Just, it just got me so excited because I've never done that. All right, we're getting more Dane. Let's go. Get the tank. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's one thing that, that hey, I told. Seriously, yeah. that's, hey, that is yeah. phenomenal. Awesome. Yeah. That's so awesome that God is doing that in you. I told her I never want to just give my testimony again. Just my testimony, yeah. you know? Yeah, well, 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 just really quick, like, it's awesome because as you teach and stuff, you're, 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 you'll realize, as Christina knows too, as you teach, your testimony just weaves in and out. You pull little pieces, and, and it just, you, they're little inserts. Yeah. So you go more biblical now from the testimony, you've done that, but now you're going more, as far as biblical, like more teaching-wise, and then the little inserts from the, the little pieces will always pop in here and there through whatever text you're doing. Yeah. Because that's that life application stuff. Yeah. You, yeah, it's just, yeah. Because you've been telling your testimony a long time, real. and now God's, he's taking you to, you got your testimony, but now he's like, I'm going to take you into this other now realm of teaching with little pieces of the testimony. That's what's Scary. up. Christina, what, what you got? What you got? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, even like both of the Sunday morning services, like I was sitting in the back kind of observing the room, you know, as Austin was yeah. teaching, and even the first service, you have all these people that have never walked into church before. Like even the two homegirls in the back with the colored hair, I was yeah. just like, yeah, they've never been in church. And all these people, it's like they didn't even know what to do. They were like, where do we sit? Like, do we stand during worship? Like, <laughs> these people are fresh off the street, so right? So awesome. And when he was just like, you know, hey, you know, you know, give me a thumbs up if you want to receive Christ. You know, like the girls in the back, like one of them, you know, with the purple hair, gave her thumbs up to receive Christ. Yep. And even just seeing all of them stand in line and just like – you know, like coming up to Austin and like praying with them and just like praying with him and just pouring out their hearts. And because it was just so real and watching him do that, you know, whether it was like the retreat or that Sunday morning service, you would never know that that was his first rodeo, you know, like teaching. Right. Mm -hmm. And seeing like because, you know, sometimes people, it's their first time, they're a little bit rocky, but you always could tell by the response. Yeah. And the response was people coming like grown people, like sobbing, pouring out their hearts and praying for them. And all, and all these young, colorful people, like, giving their lives to the Lord. And then second service, same thing. Like, you could just see the fruit that it was so real. It was so raw. And even, like, too, I was, like, I walked in because I went to the bathroom again. And I was, like, wait, we're in Acts now for the second, you know, for the second service. Yeah. But it was just, like, you would not, like, and he just, like, pulled it out. And it was, like, boom, 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 boom. Because I saw that transition in your life, Ryan. Like, when you were sharing your story to teaching, mm -hmm. even when you used to do the Shine events. And you just, like, and I think that's just, it, you guys are just sharing like the stories of Jesus and I think you know and that's what I was telling Austin like you know dude like you know Ryan is ordained Tom is ordained and Jairus is ordained but they don't fit the box of you know these things that that this is you know a, a new avenue God's pushing you into mm -hmm. where you could be who you are teaching the word you don't have to be this like button up tie kind of pastor mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. or like teacher and mm -hmm. so it was just really cool to see just like the the lost find the Lord at 8 30 AM and like in Texas coming yeah. to Christ yep. and just the testimonies and even the in between all the in between stuff. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of in between stuff too. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just mean from yeah. the, uh, the couple that was with us and yeah. the new parents, newly married. Yeah. And her being, you know, single forever and me being newly married and I have the burger place. Remember right before? Okay, dude. So check this out. Check this out. Okay. So dude, so the Lord is soon. I feel like every time we're on tour, the moment we land, the Lord oh, just yeah. starts Walmart, moving. The Walmart. Yeah, Walmart. Then, yeah, the Walmart. Whatever. Okay. So I'll tell the water burger thing and you tell the Walmart thing. So this couple that was with us, right? Cool guy. This, they were they had like babies and they had they dropped their babies they off. Had babies. They were yeah, they were Two. they were driving their us around for a couple of days. So right before they dropped stuff at the airport, I was like in Waterburger. Shout out to Water Waterburger. You guys are actually You guys good. like Waterburger? Yeah, I, I mean, told it, you to it, dunk everything in the gravy. Yeah, it was my first so time. Okay, used to okay, be, it's not like, you know, but the yeah. The cheese is good there. Yeah. So <laughs> the I'm in the, the so, so um, I'll tell the story, but you have to tell the Walmart story because that was awesome. So I go and I was, you know, 
it's always going that. So I went to the bathroom. Is <laughs> the bathroom? That seems to be the place the Lord speaks to me. I'm in the bathroom and I'm like washing my hands before we eat. And the Lord just like speaks to me. And we had been with this guy, you know, when his wife for like a couple days. And so we got to a chance to hear a lot of their lives. And this didn't come up in any of our conversation. We had gone out to eat with them. We had three hour drives with them. This had not come up at all. Right. And so I'm in the bathroom and the Lord just speaks to me and was like, Christina, um, he's praying about a transition with his job and a career thing. And you just need to let him know that I hear him and to just pray for him. I was like, that's very specific Lord. Like if he's not in transition, I'm going to look really crazy. So I go in and sit down and I was late. uh, Yeah. As we're late for the airport. Oh, this is on the way out. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just like, uh, so uh, the random question, but I was, I was like, are you praying about like, transition from like job or like career he's like yes <laughs> he's like i've literally he's like there's so many because him and his wife he used to do a lot of ministry you know mm-hmm. but since i'm having babies you know stuff yeah. has changed you Same know priorities thing. they have like two like little little guys and he was just like you know i'm seeing a lot of my friends you know get hired at the church and all these different things and i've asked the lord like have you forgotten about me and i have been and he's like i feel like my prayers like haven't been I haven't had my prayers being answered in that area. And I was like, well, cause he's, <laughs> he wants to transition jobs in yeah. his career to like, I guess, go back to serve the Lord. And I was like, well, through this, obviously the Lord's telling you that he hears you. Okay. My friend. Yeah. And it's coming. So we got a chance to pray for him. And so for me, I walked away and I was like, man, Lord, like you're awesome. That yeah. you would just, it was so simple. And sometimes those small impressions, like, yeah. It's really God's heart, like right before, you know, and I, you know, love this couple so much. And it's just really God moving our hearts for them right before we leave, like that God sees you. And sometimes we just got to take those steps of faith. And I was like, if this is wrong, then I'm going to like, who, who? Who just asked someone after knowing them for two days, like, are you like what, in a career but what, change? But what's the worst that could happen? Right? I know it's if true. Right? No, so okay, maybe I didn't hear right. But yeah. when you step out and it happens, you're yeah. like, perfect. Yeah. I have a question. Is he a young guy? Uh, early 30s, late 20s. Is he Matt's friend? No. What's his name? Do we remember his name? Isaac. Was it Isaac or Isaiah? Isaiah. That's, that's Matt's friend. Yeah. yeah. And he had a bunch of kids. What, he, he had, had two? two babies? Yeah, I, uh, I they, think so. He's, like, he's one of Matt's friends, right? Yeah. But he, he, a Mexican dude, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know him. He was on our first tour. He, him and yeah. Matt picked me up. Yeah, um, yeah, he did. Yeah. yeah. And then he, he got a bunch of kids and he kind of came out of ministry. So last time yes. I was there... He was, I saw him like for a minute, but because he had all the kids and all that stuff, pulled him out. So that's him. That's yeah. awesome, dude. Yes. Yes. yes the first yeah. time, I toured with him there. Good yeah. Guy. He was really cool. Yeah. yeah we his loved wife him. and him were super I, sweet. Yeah. yeah. They were okay, awesome. Okay. That's so awesome that that's him. Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah. It's always that, those in between things too. That's. Oh, for sure. The, you know, living it out. You know, it's yeah. like, you don't, we don't just turn off the gospel. You know, the uh, Chick-fil-A in line right as uh, before I came here, uh, her name was Melissa. She came and saw when I first spoke here at, at, Di- at Diamond Bar. Yeah, she was like, I remember that. Ball. I was like, why don't you, do you go there? She's like, no. It's like, well, I live here now. Why don't you go? Really? I was like, yeah, come Sunday. Okay. Dude, like, see just, it? just like, like that. those little things. And yeah. not everyone's called. It's, you know, my wife's always like, just order and let's just go. <laughs> <laughs> but if God draws a circle, you know. Yeah. That's what Isaiah was saying, because me and Isaiah are very much like, we got to go, we got to go. And his wife's very like, <laughs> And <chill>. me, <laughs> making my four sandwiches. I know. So me, you, and Maddie and Isaiah are the same. Like, let's go, let's go. And you guys are like, you know. But dude, tell the Walmart story, the Walmart story. We oh. Got, oh, yeah. So this could be the, yeah. We, got, we have five minutes It's super quick. No, no, it's we, right. We have five minutes. We, we. <laughs> as soon as we land. Yeah, we land. We go to Walmart because I'm shot. She's like, let's get you some throw coat. As soon as we walk in, there's a guy in like a cart. Yeah. And he cut, he stops and he goes to me, what, what did he say? You're a cool guy. Or you're, you're a pretty <laughs> cool guy. And I was like, what did I say? Oh, I was like, thanks. But the only thing cool you see about me is Jesus, I promise, or something. And yeah. he's like, yeah. Yeah. And he drove away. <laughs> on his cart. No, yeah, yeah, on his cart. And that was it. And then. Just minutes later, he finds us, and he's been dealing with the years, years dilemma of he stepped away from the church and ministry because he saw idolatry, he was and a pastor too, sexual immorality, yeah. and all these things within the church uh. that drove him away from it. Yep, because he had never experienced Christ. Because mm. if you experience yeah. Christ, you see that those are 
the Christ Christ is the head of the body and right. the head of the head makes the whole body in unity. Right. It all works the same. Right. And those contradictions and those things, like those are things that point people he, away. He was getting from his Jesus. eyes on off of God, who God is perfect, but then he was getting his eyes on the the flaws, which are not these are not right, to be clear, but mm. you, you should don't leave God because people fail you. God will never fail you. Yep. And so, so he, and he got, got into like uh, Judaism and he was like t trying to call say like certain scriptures were fake and like showing how this is all like unreal and untrue and if you go down that you can go yeah you could argue for hours and yeah. I was just like okay just hearing him out and we prayed for him and he was like his wife kept coming like come on we gotta go come on we gotta go <laughs> yeah. but he just the before and after just so much softer because mm -hmm. you could see that he saw, even if it was just like that, like that was the spirit that saw. Yeah. And the the spirit, who knows where that sea goes. Yeah. You know, I even texted him for him to come. Uh -huh. But you know me, I don't give my number out. Yeah. And because uh, I wanted him to come, but you never know where that seed is going to go and where yeah. God puts that and plants that. And that's why we're called to be the salt, to be the light, not mm -hmm. just to put it on as like a shirt. And when we go out of the house, mm -hmm. we're supposed to be it, walk it out, live it, because you never know who's going to see and who needs to see. The parable of the seeds. You just throw the seeds out. Some some take root. Some die out. You know, mm -hmm. it's just, but God's the one that, that brings the increase. And you, just, you said that little seed, first. Jesus, and he takes off, takes off in his little cart, comes back. You know, he's this Holy Spirit. We person. were far from this, like, where we first That's met him. so awesome. Yeah, and he just was talking about how he had, like, you know, because he used to be a pastor, and he said he used to do worship, and he you could just see there was, like, a lot of hurt there. So mm -hmm. I basically just, like, called it out. I was like, listen, man, mm -hmm. you've been hurt, but people are a reflection of Christ, and yeah. you cannot use that as an excuse because he's basically – that's it. This whole thing now people are trying to, like, deconstruct their faith. It's because they've seen crazy stuff, right, yeah. or experienced stuff. But it's like, listen, man, like – like your image of church is a burned down building, but like Christ, like we are the church and, and Christ isn't or like, it's almost like this, for example, someone could come into my house and totally misrepresent who I am when people come into my house. But that, that person misrepresenting me isn't me. Isn't you. Yeah. And, and that's the same thing with oftentimes in God's house. Like sometimes mm -hmm. people as flawed and as broken as they are can misrepresent who Christ is, but that's not Christ. And so when, so I just went straight forward. I was like, listen, man, like people have misrepresented the Lord in your life, but I'm just going to pray that God encounters you. So we prayed for him and he was choking up. Like mm -hmm. you could see, because there's a reason why he like followed us and was oh, trying to like be heard. It was, it was like, he just was hurt, you know? And so it was just cool to see, like, it was like God's spirit encountered him because he was on this whole like Judaism kick. And we just took the time to just love on him, you know? And I was just like, dude, he just needed an encounter with the Lord. And I believe the Lord. And yeah. that's what everyone needs. Yeah. To so know that Jesus wants to encounter them where they are mm -hmm. and whatever hurt they have, he loves us. Mm -hmm. He was sent on a mission. Christianity is the only faith where the, the hand's already been extended. Yeah. That came to me. The hand's already there and we're just, we just have to step into it and yeah. accept it. Mm -hmm. And I love you said not a reflection because yeah. back then people said that's a Christian because of how they acted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then now it's, I'm a Christian, but they don't act it out. Mm -hmm. And it got flipped. Mm -hmm. So don't ever base your what you think Christianity and Jesus is, and God are based on a person. Mm -hmm. That's for you to experience with him and then step into it. Because he is so far beyond all of the flaws and everything that we are. And then that's well said. And we're going to wrap this show up, guys. This was phenomenal. Yeah, it's already time. I know. When you party, it goes fast. It's always like that, especially when you get like good friends in the studio. Um, all right. Well, hey, go to the whosoever's.com. Book us to come out. We want to bring the Great Commission. Go to YouTube, uh, the whosoever's or Ryan Reese. Get this show and share it with your friends. I love you guys. Peace. This has been The Ryan Reese Show. To connect and find out more about Ryan, click on ryan-reese.com. Check us out next Saturday at 9 p.m. for The Ryan Reese Show.